samples here of um, some finished color patterns that are uh, most of them here are true complementary color schemes. So you can see, so you can have like a, this one looks like a really dark red, like almost a maroon, like a pure green here. Nice uh, themes coming about. Uh, because the design strategies were used, creating motion down the middle and something uh, something more interesting on the outsides in the corners to be, act as a focal point. So it leads to these larger themes. Um, what's that one? Let's see this one. This one. This looked like a compliment. Did I show this one before? Does this look familiar? look like a complementary color scheme I think so it's got on a different variations of pink it looks like and green light greens nice uh, building of themes coming together to create larger forms so look at this one is this a complementary color scheme what what are the colors here the two opposite colors, what are they? Yes, blue and orange, look at that. I love how this looks like a happy face. Like it's a nice, it looks like he, this one's using the seams to create that effect. Really, some really cool forms that came out of there. And then, what's this one? This one, does this look like it's complementary? A successful complementary color scheme here. We've got yellow. What's the complement of yellow? What's the opposite of yellow? What's the opposite of yellow? Consult the color wheel. The opposite of yellow is what? Purple or violet? Did someone say that? Couldn't hear. There we go. Yes, and that's a. It's a violet. Uh, gradient. If I double click, let's see. If I were to um, look at the test that color, let's see. If I bring up my gradient panel, then I would be checking this color here to see what this color was. When I selected this color just now from the gradient, uh, well, I'd be testing all the colors in the gradient, but I could see that this is just a pure neutral white. And this color, I clicked on it, and then it gave, came up as a solid color in my toolbar. So I'm going to deselect. And then I would double-click over here. Or not double-click. I would click to put that color into the uh, onto the fill here and double-click that. And then I can kind of see what hue it is. So it's, it looks like it is a, a true purple. It's between between the red and the blue. It might might be a little bit pushing it to the blue, but I think I think it makes it, it looks like a purple to me. So that's how I test. That's how I test to see if this is a true complementary color scheme. So you get points for achieving that true complementary color scheme. This one, it looks like it's creating the simultaneous contrast because it's the two colors at equal values, side by side, those complements. Does it, does it look like it's vibrating? Kind of. <clears throat> like if you zoom way in, you kind of create a vibrating effect. And then, yeah, right now I can actually see the vibrating, moving, tripping my eyes out. This one, this is almost com complimentary. There's one color that's kind of throwing it off, but, but it looks, I love the color scheme. Color is such an intuitive <coughs> phenomenon. When you, you know, you choose it by how you feel. 
and that's great that's awesome and I'm sure <clears throat> you might just you know choose colors based on how you're feeling and come up with a brilliant color scheme that might not be a complimentary color scheme and that's okay what I would do if you come up with a really cool color scheme that you like is just save a version of that pattern because you can definitely use that for your portfolio to earn the full points for the assignment you need to demonstrate that you know what a complementary color colors sorry you know what a complementary color scheme is and you know how to to create one so I would say if you if you choose a color scheme you really like but it's not complimentary set it set, save it as a version and then just do another like save save a copy and give it a name for whatever name you want to call your color scheme that you came up with and then keep going and trying to choose colors that are falling into the the true complimentary color scheme this one I would say let me test this one if I select this color here and I double click here I can see that that's between blue and green so that looks like a blue green to me so what's the complement of blue green gotta consult your color wheel complement of blue green is red orange so you want to stick with red oranges you don't want to come over here and add magentas right that's what this this person did. He he was correct on the this color here. This looks like a red orange, and I that's that looks like a good red orange color. The slider is all the way down here where there's the red orange, but then this color that he has on the stroke is more magenta. So that's adding an additional hue that doesn't really that's not quite it's breaking the rule <clears throat> you gotta choose one color and it's opposite you don't want to add another hue here and there for for achieving a true complementary color scheme is there anything wrong with this color scheme no I, li I like it I really like this combination of colors so you're definite you can definitely choose colors just intuitively that will look really great together <clears throat> Um, people, people naturally have a lot of people naturally have a sense for that. So, so store those those versions away for your portfolio because those are awesome too. I'm not saying by any means that complementary color scheme is the best. I'm not saying that. It's it's just a standard color scheme that's tried and true that you you can. You can depend on getting good results from it, and it's it's one to try to learn to achieve. So I'm going to just close these for now, and let me go back to where I left off here. So we were talking about color accuracy and having a process guide handy for that reason to know what colors you're to know ahead of time how colors are actually going to print. Um, <clears throat> this is a, an important note. While jobs destined for process color printing are designed around CMYK inks, pieces that will be shown in a purely electronic environment, like web pages or um, imagery that you create for, like, or graphics you create for maybe apps, app design, mobile devices, anything that's purely going to be on screen. And graphics for television are usually designed around the light based red, green, and blue hues of the RGB palette, which that's what I was showing you when you set up your color mode. That you have the cho choices between um, when, you, when you make your new document, remember in the advanced setting, you have the choices between CMYK color mode or RGB, and the presets are. For print, is the preset for print is always going to be in CMYK color mode for Illustrator. And anything that you're doing for the screen, like film and video or the web, the preset's going to be set to RGB color mode. And you could at any time change your color mode by going to File, hovering over Document Color Mode. You can switch to RGB if, if you need to. 
but generally you want to stick with the, the a preset because you have the swatches that come with that preset that are designed for whatever you're planning on doing if you're planning on printing you got swatches that are designed to be more accurate for printing that come along with the print preset and when you do work for the web you're gonna have colors and choose a web preset you're gonna have swatches that are going to be designed to look more to look better and be more accurate across different different monitors to, to be more accurate on many monitors um, or for television you're going to have colors that are designed to to look a certain way and be dependable on different TV screens um, before I move on to RGB <clears throat> just wanted to show you this is kind of cool it's showing this print of this peppermint it's showing a magnified view of what the dot pattern looks like for C CMY cake pro four color process printing it's actually those rollers actually are spraying on dots in this this pattern formation so when you look at the print up close it will always have this interesting little dot pattern so it's kind of interesting to look at. Okay, moving on to the next page, all about RGB colors now, red, green, and blues, what they stand for. And these are the primary colors when we're talking about color as light. So like I said, color as paint, there's a whole different laws, set of laws of physics and how colors combine to make other colors when we're talking about color as paint. And then color as ink has a whole other, sorry, color, sorry, color as paint and ink. They work in this, a similar way. <clears throat> but when it comes to color as light, there's a whole different set of laws of physics for how they work together. So, this, so when we're talking about color as light, the primary colors, the starting colors that you can't, you can't mix to get these colors, when we're talking about light, are red green and blue those are the light channels that combine to create all the millions of colors that we see on our monitors displayed to us on our monitors displayed on television screens um, colors that are generated through a, a digital camera are generated through the combinations of red green and blue so simultaneously when we are choosing colors in for our art in, in Illustrator, every color <clears throat> not only has its makeup in cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, if we're going to go to print with it, but it's also displayed to us in certain amounts of red, green, and blue in how we see it as light on our, on our monitors, on our screens. So it's showing the makeup here, red, green, and blue. It's showing the amounts that make up whatever color we choose with our color picker. So going over here, here we see when red, green, and blue combine at full intensity, all three of these colors combine at full intensity, what color does it look like it creates when all three colors combine at full intensity, which Full intensity for RG, when we're talking about color as light, red, green, and blue, the range of color is goes from zero, being black, cranked all the way up to full intensity, which is measured at 255. That's different than what we saw with, si with CMYK color, which is measured from zero to 100 in percentage, and the lower numbers are the tint, the lighter colors, We'll get, we'll get to tint with RGB, but let's look at this. So what, when we crank up those three colors at full intensity to 255 and we combine all three of them, what, what do we mix? White. That's exactly right. So that's why when you are using your color picker and you're <coughs> dragging the little circle around and you put, put it all the way up to the top, left corner that makes pure white you will see RGB measure at 255 for all
all of them. RGB measuring at 255. And <clears throat> when I drag this circle around, um, I'm my hue is like a blue-green right now. So when I put my circle up in the other corner, I'm cranking up the full full intensity on the green and the blue, and there's no red. So 255 for green, 255 for blue, and my circle's way up here. Zero for red. And when I drag the circle down to the black, it's like I'm turning down the, cranking down the intensity, bringing it all the way down to black. What do you think RGB is? is measuring that right now. Zero for all of them. Red, green, and blue are all at zero. And notice this number here. What do we call this number? Do you guys notice this number changing as I move the circle around, as I'm choosing colors? It's like a little address for every color that you choose. There's a very specific code here or kind of like an address for that specific color. It's a six-digit number. Does anyone know the name for this? What's it this? Any web designers here? Yes, a hex code or a hexadecimal number. So designer, web designers, programmers use these numbers often to, to program their, the, web, the colors for the web, the font colors, the background colors. Um, what if you are designing for the web, it's a good idea to check this box that says only web colors because computer monitors are so different, they display color very differently from one monitor to the next. So limiting the palette just to the tried and true colors that are going to reproduce accurately across monitors is a safe approach to designing for the web. So you can always narrow down your palette. Even in a print document, I could choose just colors that are going to be safe for the web. That It's a lot less choices, but I know that I'm choosing colors that are going to probably look <coughs> accurate, look the same on my monitor as on the next person's monitor. But even, even this way, you can never be 100% accurate. So it's a good idea if you are designing for the web to test your work, uh, look at it on different monitors just to, just to double check. And each color has its own little hexadecimal number. I'm going to uncheck this now, though. When you choose pure white, funny enough, the hexadecimal code, it's what you don't want to see on your report card. It's always straight Fs for white. And for black, it's also what you don't want to see on your in your grades, straight zeros. And then you have all different combinations of any other color in between. And if I choose if I'm in the red and I crank up the intensity on the red. The, it's the red that's at 250, measuring at 255. The green is zero. The blue for this color is 61. There's a little blue in this color. So it's interesting to see the makeup and of, of RGB for every color as well. And um, this is showing combining, they call, when the color is cranked up to 255, they call it a solid. And funny enough, when the color is lower than 255, it's a darker color, because as we bring down the number, we're getting closer to zero, dimming down, kind of bringing, dimming down the light. And we call these darker colors that are measuring at lower than 255, we call these tints. RGB tints combining to make, oh, there's that green color again. Tint. Um, and this is just talking about what I just mentioned, that every monitor displays color differently, so it's good to, to test your work on a variety of platforms before finalization. And remember that while CMYK-based colors can be represented on a computer monitor, RGB files cannot be used for printing.
that and that's that's in Illustrator. When we get to Photoshop, we'll find that you can use documents in Photoshop in RGB, but stri Illustrator is you strictly in Illustrator you strictly want to be when you when you plan to print, you want to be in a CMYK document. I learned from a designer I was actually I was working with when I worked and when I was a graphic designer for my, the city of Cerritos in the recreation department, I had I, one of my coworkers was doing a brochure for the sheriff station, and for some reason he had his document in RGB mode, and he didn't do a test print ahead of time, and he went right to mass producing a brochure for the sheriff station, and the boys in blue were not happy being the boys in purple on his brochure because he had been in the wrong color mode and he didn't test. So I learned a very valuable lesson that uh, you gotta be in CMYK mode in Illustrator and you you never know, the, the color's not necessarily gonna, going to print as you see it on your monitor. So it's always important to, to do a test print before you mass produce. Um, let's see what else I have to show you. I'm almost done showing you going through these handouts. Let me just get on my desktop here. The last one here is this one here. Just to get on the same page as far as terminology goes. Um, additive color. That's what what we call another name for color as light when we're talking about the way color works as light on the screen we t we refer to rgb color as additive colors and this diagram is showing uh color as light like they look like stage lights shining down and people who do lighting design for the stage also have to understand how colored lights combine to make different colors. They actually mix lights like mixing paint to create new colors. And people who work in film and video also need also do um, that kind have to have that kind of understanding using using transparent color gels that they attach to lights for like a green screen shoot. It's really important to know how to neutralize the lighting so you don't have a lot of green light on your subject so you can take out the background cleanly for a green screen shoot and um and then when we get into photoshop we're gonna we're going to be working with photographs that are in rgb mode and need we're gonna need to understand how to neutralize the lighting in color correction and know how to you know uh, understand what is the what are the complements? What are the opposites in light? Because, for example, what do we what do we see here? Let's take a look. Um, so all the colors are combining together, and they make, like you said before, white, right? When all when red, green, and blue combine together at, at full intensity, they make white. Now let's take a look. This this is actually this diagram is forming a color wheel for how light works. So check this out. When red and green mix, when it's light, not paint now, this is light. What is What are red and green creating when they combine? Look at that. Who would have thought? That would never happen in paint, right? Isn't that weird? Red and green combine together as light, make yellow. Bizarre, right? And then red and blue make a color that we call magenta. And then blue and green combined together make a color that we call cyan. Then the colors that are opposite each other on this color wheel, those, the opposite of magenta is green. The opposite of yellow is blue here. These are the complements when we're talking about color as light. The opposite of red <coughs> is cyan. So when we, you'll see later when we work in Photoshop, you have a, a photo where everything looks green and the skin tone looks green because it's 
there's neon or fluorescent lighting in the room and it's just making everything have a green color cast to it. Well, you can crank up the magenta and that's the same as subtracting green from the, from the image. It's <clears throat> neutralizing the color and making everything look nice again, like make this, making the skin tone look natural. So having that understanding of what the opposite colors are in light is going to help with color correction when we get to Photoshop. Um, so we call it additive color and when it's RGB, when it's color is light, and we call it, the term is subtractive color when we're talking about the color as inks, like the process color inks. So here we have um, what it looks like when inks combine in, on the printing press, the four color process printing. Um, blue, so we call this cyan, magenta, yellow, all combined. And then the overlapping colors that we're getting here, the red, blue, green. And then when all of these three colors Combine, we get kind of a black. They have a separate pure black, but this is just like a dingy color that's like black. So when when you look at a really dark color like black, or when you look at a pure black, um, all the light waves are absorbed or or subtracted. So that's where the term subtractive color comes from. When combining color colors or darkening color is being subtracted because when you look at a specific color like yellow the light wave uh, only the the yellow light waves are reflected into your eyes and that's how we're perceiving yellow or any other specific color black is the one where there are no light waves reflected they're all subtracted when we're looking at white it's a combination of all light waves reflected into your eye, you're seeing all the light waves at the same time to, to perceive white. So that's as if they're all being added. So hence the term additive. It's all the light uh, reflected, added to you, <laughs> bouncing into your eyes. So that's where those terms come from, I believe. That's how I make sense of it anyway. Good to know that terminology because it's used a lot in the design world. Okay, now the moment that we've been waiting for, let's make the uh, color version of our pattern. I'm going to show you the quick way to do it. I'm going to open up my pattern. I think it's on the desktop. Let's see. Okay, I think it's here. No, that's the series. Pattern. Um, is it this one? Is it? I think this is the one I made here for this class. I'm going to open that. All right. So here it is. So this is how you start. You open up your black and white version. You're going to need to keep your black and white version to turn in. And I'm going to just... Uh, just make sure it's saved and it's all ready to turn in before you make your color version. So make sure it's everything centered and it's nice and neat because you're going to turn in your black and white version as well as your color version. So once you're done with your black and white version, you have it open in Illustrator. Then you can go File and choose Save As to make the color version. So I'm just going to save it on my computer. And just change the name so you take off the BW. I'm highlighting BW and then change that to C for color. That's going to my desktop as an Illustrator file. Save. And OK. So now I can rest assured that my black and white version is now closed and tucked away safely. And now I can start making color changes. So. For making the complementary color scheme, you want to think of a color first, maybe a color you really like or a color you think you want to use. Maybe I want to use a, like a pink color.
color of some sort. So I can double click, or maybe I'll go with a red, just a plain red. So I choose, so I clicked on, double clicked on my fill. And I'm gonna choose from my hue slider. I'm gonna choose a red here that I like, and I'm gonna say okay there. So now, um, you might want to use your color guide to help you out. So there's another panel that's tabbed with the color panel. You can also find it under window in alphabetical order, the color guide, which is a helpful panel. Um, you don't want to rely 100% on the color guide. You want to have, you want to know your complements up here. So I want to know ahead of time from understanding a color wheel. I want to know, I need to know ahead of time in my own mind what the complement of red is. So I know the complement of red is green. Or if I was choosing red orange, I would know the complement is blue green and so on and so on. So determine that ahead of time in your mind before you start relying on the color guide because you want to be able to branch out and choose wisely and not just be limited by what the color guide tells you because sometimes the color guide could lead you into the into a wrong direction if if you don't have a firm grasp on color yourself and what the complements are in your own mind so i know red and green but i'm going to take a look at what the color guide gives me so you want you want to make sure that you set your that the color you choose is set as your base color so you might need to click on this button here to set your base color to make sure it's set into the it's programmed into the color guide then there's a drop down arrow that you can click on here and it will bring down a bunch of different color schemes and different um, suggestions for colors that fall into that specific color scheme. Our goal for the assignment is to do a complementary, so complementary color scheme. So you, you'll need to scroll all the way up to get advice from the color guide on a complementary color scheme for that color that you selected. So there's complementary here, and it gives me, it shows me what Illustrator tells me is the exact opposite of this red that I chose. And then it gives me tints and different variations, tones and shades of those two colors that I can easily choose from. I can also try complementary two, but I wouldn't do split complementary because then you're breaking the rules of a true complementary color scheme. Complementary two just gives me more choices. So it just will make it easier to choose colors so now in order to change my pattern to color what i recommend you do is start with the direct selection tool and and you don't see if i use my selection tool everything is grouped and i don't want to take the time to ungroup anything so i'm going to use my direct selection tool the white arrow i'm going to click outside to deselect and I'm just going to click on a shape area to select one color. And so that little, that gray is coming up here because I'm selecting a specific gray on this heart. And then to select every instance of this gray, I need to go to select, hover over same and choose fill color. Now every instance of that gray is selected. It might look like the whole thing is selected because there might be a lot of that color, but it's it should be just selecting every instance of that specific color. So now I can change that specific color altogether. I can choose, I'm gonna choose a color here from my color guide. So now I have that color on my heart and my flower, that's perfect. So I, I'm liking the way that's mapping the color out. Now, if you find that you don't like how it's mapping the color out, like if it changes, like if I wanted my uh, flower to have a different color on it than my heart, 
right now I'm kind of, I'm locked into having the flower have the same color as the heart because that was the same shade of gray. Now, if it happens to you that, and you don't like being locked into to that color layout, what you have to do is you have to ungroup all your boxes. Oops, command minus to zoom out. And you have to color just one, you have to come up with a new color mapping for one box. Whoops, I'm, I think this has a lot of anchor points, so it's taking a long time. So you would, if you don't like that, the way that it's working, um, you have to uh, ungroup everything, ungroup, and I would just select the one box, option drag out a duplicate, and change my colors here how I want them, and delete the rest, and you have to reduplicate. So and then, see, then I could go in and make changes how I want and select um, and select the flower and deviate from that color mapping to do something different with that. Now it has a lighter pink. So that's the only way you have to redesign the colors in the one box and reduplicate if you don't like the way the easy method is working out for you. But I'm going to demonstrate how to do it the easy way. I hope that, you, that yours does work out the easy way because it saves a lot of time, an inordinate amount of time to do it this way. So just going over again how, how we do it this way. Take the direct selection tool. Let's say I want to select this gray here. And I don't change the color yet until I select every instance of that gray. That's what saves you a lot of time. So I go to select. Hover over same, choose fill color. Every instance of that gray is selected, and then I can use my color guide to choose a green here. So now I've got, and this is already, I could call this done because it's already a complementary color scheme. You can leave shades of gray and white and black. You can leave neutrals in there. So I could call it done now, or I could keep going if I want. But I, I want to show you what could happen to you if you are using the color picker, which there's nothing wrong with using the color picker, and let me just show you what could happen. So let's say I choose this gray here, and I go up to select, same, fill color, and every instance of that gray is selected now. And let's say I want to deviate from the color guide. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I encourage it. And I want to use the color picker to choose my own color this time. I don't want to just be limited to the colors that the color guide is giving me. So I want to choose my own color. I'm going to be adventurous now. So I double click on the fill to get my color picker. And I know that I'm doing a complementary color scheme. So I need to do choose either a red or a green. So hmm, what do I want? Maybe I'll go with red. Maybe I want like a really dark red here like almost maroon and I say okay look what happened it stuck it's stuck in grayscale it just gave me a darker shade of gray that's actually the grayscale version of that maroon that's what happens when you use the color picker and you have grayscale colors to begin with so the way to fix that situation is to go to the color panel which is also located under window in alphabetical order if you can't find it. And notice in the color panel, the color is stuck as a grayscale color. So what I have to do is I have to click on the little options menu here and just switch into CMYK. And now it's giving me the maroon that I chose. So be aware of that, that that's something that you have to, you have to watch out for. That's gonna probably happen. Um, what else? Can I use gradient? Sure, I can use gradient. Maybe I want a gradient for my background. So I'm going to select the black. Go to, oh, am I going over time? I apologize. Okay, well, I guess, I guess that's it. Unless you guys want to see how to put a gradient in. Sorry to go over. Should I, should I finish up or do you guys, you guys got the point? You guys want to head out? I know it's a long night. 
I could just wrap up with gradient. So you can select the color, go to select um, same fill color, and then go to just go to bring up your gradient panel, which I have it already, and then um, and I can click on the gradient slider. Or I can drag in a color, maybe from my color guide. So maybe I want a gradient with a green. So I just drag a color from color guide to the gradient. I've got a gradient, um, but maybe I want a radial gradient. And I don't like the muddiness here. So this black is a grayscale black. I could throw it out and I could click to add a color, double click and adjust my cyan, magenta, yellow and key to be more like of a deep green so that it will blend nicer and make the adjustments and you can always use gradient and let me just oh did I forget oh no did I no I did I that was okay let me zoom out here oh except it's only adding gradient inside of there I kind of wanted it to be here so let me just go select and same and fill color and we will can and let's see if I choose I want to choose I want to add another color to it so that my gradients different here click outside see what it looks like with a gradient in the background um, it can kind of add a little extra three-dimensionality but um, it looks good as a solid color too for a background so you can do all solid colors or you could add gradients have fun with it I'm gonna stop there and Thursday I'll do just a quick run through on printing and I'll I'll just run through turning it into on Thursday since I didn't get to show turning it in but it's the same method of turning in as usual I'm gonna stop this